it's time to say goodbye to the amazing V90. This will be my last wagon adventure, my last wagon road trip, at least here in Norway, with the V90. Because a couple of days ago, the 1st of October 2024, that was the last possibility you had to factory order a brand new V60 or V90 here in Norway. And why is that? Well, the past years, the Norwegian government have had a strong push on electrification and battery electric cars. All well and good maybe, but the backside of that metal are constantly increasing the taxes for the plug-in hybrids, making them more and more expensive. And in conjunction to the price and taxation, the local demand are also more and more towards SUVs. And these two factors have made the wagons obsolete here in Norway. Quite sad. So that is why Volvo Car Norway have decided that after the 1st of October 2024, they will no longer offer the V60 and V90 here in Norway. So this is my goodbye with the wagons in Norway. This is my goodbye, uh, my celebration of the wagons, because I, I love these two wagons, and especially this V19. So that's why I have uh, all made, also made a couple of uh, wagon videos lately. So if you haven't see, seen them on my YouTube channel, just go check them out after you have seen this one. I had the V60 T6 on loan, and now the V90 T8. This is a beautiful spec car, platinum grey over the dark exterior theme, running 20 inch alloys and finished off with the blonde Nappa leather sport seats. Beautiful spec car. Almost perfect in my opinion. But now it's the last day with this wagon. I'm here in Bergen. I've been here a couple of days to visit family, but now it's time to head back to Oslo. There's a new work week starting tomorrow morning. And sadly, I have to deliver this one back to Volvo Car Norway later today. So I hope you will join me on this last wagon, wagon adventure. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Volvo Christian, and welcome to the V90. One last road trip, the last mile of the way. So we are starting here in Bergen, and then you will join me on a driving sequence up to probably Hamsedal, and I will do my good, bad and ugly with this V90. And then there's another driving sequence before we will end at uh, Volvo Car Storoslot Fornebu to take my final goodbyes with the V90. So it's going to be a sad moment uh, to say my goodbyes, but, but 470 kilometers in this wagon, that's just pure pleasure. Pure pleasure. Oh, I'm looking forward to uh, 470 kilometers, approximately seven to eight hours, depends on how the traffic flow are. But it's going to be uh, 470 sweet miles uh, or kilometers with uh, this uh, astonishing V90. So join me out on the road for some uh, beautiful scenery as uh, the autumn colors are all around. Let's uh, get started. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man, passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, somewhere new, somewhere I can find myself Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way, I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. Cause I found my way. Sounds 
times I know I'll be okay Cause I find my way Hello again. You're now joining me on the top of Hamsedal mountain pass. I'm at uh, 1137 meters above the sea level. But it's kind of cold here. Pine Grey XC60 uh, driving by. I have to bring my jacket. It's cold as heck. Let's see. It's just 5 degrees Celsius. So it's cold, it's windy, but I have driven now 238 kilometers with an average consumption on 5.8. So that's not too bad giving the incline up here and also decent speed along the way. But I thought I was going to do my good, bad and ugly. We're actually going to start with the ugly part here outside and then we're going to jump in for the bad parts before we are uh, taking the good parts while we are driving. And I have actually struggled the whole test period to find something ugly about the car in general. Because yes, instantly I found something ugly with this exact car. Because Volvo Car Norway have spec this car almost fully loaded. We have the ultra trim level, so already starting pretty high. 20 inch alloys, laminated windows, rear air suspension, tow bar, tinted windows. Yes, we have panoramic roof, head-up display. And yes, we don't have the ventilated seats with massage. Here they went for the sport seats. And that is, for me, totally fine. I would go the comfort seats myself, but it's two different directions. Both equal in, 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 in my head. And here they went for the sport seats. But they have spec almost 95%, but they missed maybe the most important thing. They missed the Bowers and Wilkins. How can you spec a V90 almost fully loaded and then just at 95%, no, we are done. I, I can't understand. The, the Bowers and Wilkins, that, that's like the cherry on top of the cake. That's just getting a cake and just, you smell it, you have to smell it, but you can't eat it. It's like you're missing out on the best part. Ah, oh, the agony. So in my, if I should order, I will go Bowers and Wilkins. I've had Bowers and Wilkins in four or five Volvos now, and I absolutely love it. I have it in my S60, and I absolutely love it. Much traffic uh, coming here, but I hope the audio picks up, uh, or maybe I can just wait for this traffic to uh, pass us. Yeah, it's the trucks that's uh, worst. But if I should spec my dream V90, I would go V uh, Platinum Grey, but I would go the Amber upholstery. Amber with the pit stroke, the current days, Bowers of Wilkins. And this is the last V90 of its kind here in Norway. The last press car of the V90. And I think Volvo missed the opportunity to really flash out, look at the V90 before it's going out. Because I think in just a couple of weeks, this exact car will be shipped to a Volvo dealership and they will just sell it. Because there's no point having a V90 press car when you can't buy it. So I think Volvo missed out on the Bowers and Wilkins. But that is an ugly part with this exact car. That's not in general. And then I thought maybe price could be an ugly thing. But that is specific for Norway. Because the price tag of this, 1 million and 57. Holy crap, that's, that's over 100,000 more than my S90 with more equipment. Over 100,000 more, and that's just taxes on these last years. So the price tag, but then again, that is just no, no way. So I can't find anything ugly about the V90 in general. But that's just me. I'm an enthusiast, I'm an owner, and 
one of my favorite Volvos are the S90 T8. And this is yeah, basically the same. So as an enthusiast, I'm allowed to just pass on this one. There's no ugly parts with the V90. Oh, I could totally, if I had um, the financial uh, capacity now, I would order one yeah, the 1st of October. But uh, my bank account won't allow, uh, allow me to do such crazy things right now. So I'm gonna do a pass on this one. There's no ugly parts with the V90. It's, it's only getting love for me. But it has a couple of things that are bad. And it's too cold and too noisy here. So we're gonna jump inside for the bad things and then we're gonna jump out on the road for the good things. So join me inside. Jumping inside. I think I have to start that up to get some heat. I'm running maximum comfort, 23 degrees Celsius. Heated steering wheel and also, also gonna do heated seat as well. It's on the cold side today. And I love Volvo's heated steering wheel. I, I'm often at level three, because here we have three levels. That is unique for Volvo. There's very few that have three levels. But Volvo knows the cold climate we live in. Sometimes we need a full blast. But that was a little digression. I wanted to talk about the bad things with the V90. And for me, on this test period, it has primarily been focusing around one thing the infotainment screen or the user interface. I will quickly now mention the things that annoys me the most. And the first of them are to access the drive modes. Previously, before Modia 22, we had a drive mode selector wheel. I have it in my own S60. One tap, one scroll down for performance, one scroll up for pure mode. Muscle memory, don't have to look at the screen. But here, settings wheel. Yeah, it's, it's in Norwegian, I'm sorry. Driving, hybrid power, pure, constant. You need to press this while you're driving. And yes, maybe you could do it before you're driving, but sometimes I want to change it while I'm driving. While I'm driving, maybe I see, yeah, I want to do an overtake. I want power. So in here, access power, and then plan my overtake. And then instantly, for quicker throttle response, hammer it, back in my lane safely, and then when I'm back in my lane, go back to hybrid. I think this should be much easier accessible and this one, two, three taps. And also with this pure mode, if you want to engage pure and you have one stop at, at the grocery store, then it's defaulting to hybrid. If Volvo wants to make sure that people are driving most of the time electric, then it should be able to have pure mode as a default setting. Yeah, but yeah, that was the first thing. The other thing are to access the display brightness adjustment. So one tap here, controller, scroll, scroll, and then this light um, light force in the in the displays. It's just in the coupe, but it's it's on the displays. So up for full brightness, down for low. You can't see any difference now, but uh, when it's getting dark, I like to have it low. Dim down the screens for maximum visibility. And maybe that's also how I like to drive. I like, to, I, I get disturbed if these are on full. Yeah, it's not always that responsive. I get disturbed if this is on full brightness when it's dark outside. So I like to dim it down um, to the lowest. And then now when it's bright, I have it yeah, on, on yeah, fairly high. So that is quite annoying um, to have this buried in the screen. Before, yeah, draw mode selector wheel here, and we had the display brightness wheel on the side here, before Molia 22. So everything was better before in these two aspects. But then there's a little treat here, because when I attended the 1990 event with Volvo cars for the launch of the uh, facelifted XC90 and the relaunch of the EX90, Volvo had a little surprise for us. And that is that during 2025, in the beginning, Q1, Q2, then they will start to roll out, roll out the biggest OTA update in Volvo's history. Because they will update, do a complete update on the infotainment in all Android automotive based cars from 2020. So we will get a completely new user interface, similar as we see in the EX30 and EX90. 
with this, um, you have the climate on, on the bottom and then this contextual bar, and then you have na navigation on top. So away with these four tiles. And one thing I noticed on the XT90, are that you have a button uh, in the right corner-ish that says drive mode. You can just access it, and then hopefully you will get the list you can easily press. Maybe just two presses instead of three as now. I'm not sure if Volvo can fix this uh, brightness wheel. I would like to have it in like a slide down, uh, slide down and then adjust the brightness. But that was my two bad things. But as you see, in just a couple of months, these bad things are not going to be relevant because Volvo have probably updated uh, this infotainment. So once again, what are the bad things with V90? Yeah. For me, right now, it's just a user interface. And maybe I'll, I would also prefer a place to store my phone. Now I have a, yeah, water and my phone has to uh, stand like this. So sometimes I put it down here, but yeah, with acceleration, yeah. Uh, ignore. What is this commercial shit? Slut, ignore. Yeah, I don't know. And previously, it was actually um, um, let's say a net pocket down here. You can put your phone in. But now, it's either just placed here or, or I put it down here or some, somewhere. So, yeah. A little place for your phone could be nice. But that's it. And now it's over to the good things. You're now joining me on the inside of the V90 T8 plug-in hybrid. I hope the picture are uh, turn out good. Maybe I can activate some light. Maybe that's better. But yes, the good parts with the V90. And that list are really, really long. I could probably talk all the way into Oslo about the good things and all the things I love with the V90. Because that list are long, but I will try to comprehend it uh, to a more compact uh, mass. But for me, and this is just my opinions, the biggest attraction with the 90 series cars are the interior for me. From the moment you step inside, you feel privileged or I feel privileged. I feel that I'm getting spoiled in luxury. And yes, the V90 aren't a luxury car. It is a premium, high-end premium car. But I feel spoiled in luxury. I feel, I feel privileged. I feel I have accomplished something. I remember I worked so hard and so long to be able to get into my previous uh, 90 cars. I've had I've been, I'm so lucky that I've actually have had two 90 cars. I've had the XC90 and I've also had a S90. And you feel privileged when you're driving these cars. Or I feel privileged. From the moment you step inside with these beautiful door cars, the tactical feeling, but also the visual treat. The visual treat are almost, or maybe more important. It's, it's like when you're visiting a restaurant. Yes, it, it, the steak has to be well done and be good, but the visual presentation, how are, how are the steak presented? What accessories do you have? Or, um, so the visual, how it looks on the plateau. It, yeah. I all, uh, often, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but I get intrigued by the visual look, how it looks, and then I, ah, I want to eat that. I want to eat that, I want to eat that. The visual, because my eyes do the first part uh, to uh, please my stomach. And it's like, it's, it's the same here. The visual part, with, to have this leather wrapped on top of the door cart, it looks so darn good with this contrast stitching. And we also have this, the core inlay, just under. These are elements that you, vo that you won't find in the 60 series cars. These are exclusive for the 90 series. And also exclusive for the S90 and V90. We have leather under the armrest here. And in the uh, bottom placed in the door pockets. Leather on the side and a rubberized mat in the bottom. You can even put keys in this um, door pocket. And it won't rattle and make um, annoying noises. Try to do that in your 60 car. I'm, I'm just lasting like 20 seconds before I, yeah, fuck that shit. I put the keys somewhere else. But here with this rubberized mat, it won't uh, slip and it won't create so much noise. So I love this attention to details. You feel privileged. You feel that Volvo cares about you. 
Volvo loves you and they want to make you feel good because I feel good instantly when stepping inside of a S90 or V90 just by the door cars, the visual treat and also the tactical feeling when I have to use the sun visors wrapped in beautiful fabric soft and delicious fabric in your 60 series cars these are plastic but here fabric and also in the XC90 if you go for the new book headlining then you will get leather on this uh, sun visor I had that in my XC90 but yeah fabric it's just the small things it feels so much better the tactical feeling and also the mechanical feeling when you have to move this it feels solid you have to put some weight into it also we have leather along the center console and also the quietness of the cabin also um, in, in comparison to 60 series cars it's more it's better noise insulated here so if you combine all of this the quietness of the cabin all of this interior luxury the refinement and also the ride comfort yes we have a v90 long wheelbase but with that air suspension in the rear so darn pleasant to drive long distances now i've driven like uh, 261 kilometers no 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 uh, no problem at all i could drive 200 400 600 800 i love to ride volvo's 90 series cars i got awesome seats maybe not the best for me i prefer the ventilated comfort seats with massage but yeah these are pretty darn good but yeah again little digression the biggest attraction for me with the 90 series cars are always the interior always because i feel privileged when driving them and i can actually go so far to say that you know i have the keys to my s60 here it's parked at home and then i have the keys to my to this v90 if this v90 had had the bowers of wilkins then i could totally change today i could give volvo car norway the keys to my s60 if i got this and i love my s60 i love the agility just hustle it about this little boy racer in me that wants to feel alive when you're driving have some character but this this is probably more me than the s60 more grown up more relaxed just drive in pleasure listen to a podcast or blast music on the bowers of wilkins in maximum comfort maximum refinement maximum class you look you look you feel special when you're stepping out of a 90 series car you're more upright in your back just yeah fuck yeah i have a 90 series car i i get um, a positive reinforcement of my uh, self-confident i'm not sure if that uh, i feel i feel good I feel I have worked against something and this is like a, my accomplishment because I work very very much and I use a shitload of money on, on the cars and, and Volvos so for me that's just something I can look at and feel, feel pleased with I say I did that I worked and that is and um, yes I could do that in a 60 series cars but I'm not sure if uh, this makes any sense but uh, or maybe this fulfills me in another way than the, than the S60 does. This ticks more of my boxes. Maybe that is the, something uh, I was trying to explain here. But I feel good when I'm, I'm stepping out, out outside of this car. Doesn't matter if there's people around, but I just feel good. I feel good when I lock it. I feel good when I'm walking towards it in the driveway or in the parking garage. I feel good. And stepping inside, yes. I. I uh, I can't be unhappy in a V90. I feel so freaking good. So that is my summary of the good things with the V90. That is that I feel privileged when driving them. I feel special. I feel I feel loved. I feel cared about. I feel that Volvo really cares about me and they want to spoil me in luxury. So that is uh, yeah. And now I have uh, 200 kilometers before uh, we are reaching Volvo cars to Oslo and I have to say goodbye to this. But if this car had Bowers Wilkins, uh, then I would just, please, let's change, please. But yeah, that is a little annoyment. But this car are coming for sale. So if you are in the market for a V90, you live in Norway, you can probably make a good deal on this exact car. 
because Volvo car know it does, doesn't need it anymore. You can't buy it, then why have a press car? So this is coming for sale. Low mileage, it's a only driven, I kid you not, 4,780 kilometers. I have driven, uh, I have, oh, I have actually driven 1,100 plus some in, in Oslo. So it's almost brand new. It's like a couple of months old. But I think you're gonna make a good deal if you are. Uh, that's why I'm also kind of annoyed that it doesn't have Bowers because despite not having the my favorite seats, I could definitely be considering this car. But right now it's slightly out of my price budget. Uh, I have made some bad calls uh, lately with some financial issues, and I made some bad financial um, decisions. So I think it's out of my price range, e price range either way. But I, f I freaking love this car. This is the shit. And I feel that this is much better than the uh, latest edition EX90. Just by this tactical feeling. You know, in the EX90, this is plastic. Here is fabric. Even if the EX90 are in a 90 range. It's called a 90 car. But then just chimp down on interior luxury. Probably because the car are more expensive to build. It's an electric car, so higher development cost. But, and also try to do this in your EX90. And also lose, listen how quiet it is. If the microphone picks it up, super quiet. Slightly slow, but uh, it's coming, it's coming. Hope the camera picks it up. But yeah, super quiet. Try to do that, do that in your EX90. But my point are, I have owned two 90 cars. XC90, E, E, no, XC90 and S90. And I'm considering the ES90. And I have to say, if the ES90 doesn't deliver the same interior luxury as this, then I think I'm out of that game. Because this is the things I love. I love these tactical things. The things you touch and the things you, you see, the visual treats. And the EX90, that is definitely a step under the XC90 in interior luxury. And if the ES90 doesn't close that gap, yeah, then this is the best. This is the best. This is the shit. Oh, I love this car. So that was it. I think you have to join me now for some uh, driving um, or uh, some scenic views before we will rejoin at Volvo Car Store Oslo at Fornebu. I think I will have a short stop um, here at Hamsedal or maybe at Gould to get, grab some food. And then we will rejoin at the, uh, yeah, in Oslo. So I'll see you there. Put your hands on my back, boy. Lead me to the brightest of my days. Wrap your arms around me.
I have reached the end of the line. I have just parked up here at Volvo Car Storeslott Fornebu. It is time to say my goodbye to the V90 and hand them back the keys. It is also time to pick up my own car, my S60. So now it's time to say goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed this video so far with all the scenery and also my good band and ugly. And if you have reached this point, I want to give a huge thanks to you for supporting my channel. Maybe you have already give it, given it a thumbs up. Maybe you will consider to um, drop a comment what you think about the V90 and V60. And I want to give a huge thanks to each and every one. But now it's time to say goodbye. I'm gonna, we're also going to mention the fuel consumption along the way. I just grabbed a picture of it. So we see the consumption or the trip today was 465 kilometers. Average consumption 5.9. So that's actually pretty good, um, I think. The time, 8.22. You have to take that with a little grain of salt, because when I started in, in Bergen, I drove up to this location where I recorded the intro. Uh, I actually made three different intros because I wasn't pleased with the first take, so I had to do a second take and third take. And I also took a phone call while I was there. And uh, the car was on the whole time, so it was like almost half an hour before I actually started the trip. And then I had a little stop at Hamsedal uh, while the car was running. So you can probably just peel off 45 minutes of that time. And that's also affected the average speed, yeah, 58. But either way, consumption 5.9, and during my whole test period, I have a consumption on 6.0, 1,305 kilometers. That is for the since Wednesday until today, Sunday. Yeah, they are closing up again. So, um, but yeah, now it's time to just move over the, over the luggage and say my goodbye. Or maybe if I just open up uh, my S60, open up the V19, maybe I should switch the keys and give Volvo car my own S60. Uh, V90, V90. It's time to say goodbye. But you know, there's a movie, uh, Home Alone, uh, I think it's one or two or something, probably one. And uh, there's a clip there that's saying, that says, get down on your knees and tell me you love me. So that's what we're gonna do now, because I love the V90. It is in, in plug-in hybrid form, this is my definitive favorite Volvo, next to the S90. If you don't want plug-in hybrid, then the V90 Cross Country, that is the definitive highlight, but you can't get that in plug-in hybrid, so. But the V90, holy crap. I'm so amazed by the V90, so uh, yeah. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. Now it's time to um, move over the luggage and I'm gonna park it over here. Uh, obviously I'm gonna back into the parking spot, but I just had, um, I wanted the rear look here. But yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, all subscribers. Thank you for all comments. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. So take care and bye bye.